Hi, it's Thursday, November the 25th, and I continue to read and wonder my way through the book of Genesis, and I'm having fun. Uh, I'm having so much fun that, in fact, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do a repeat. Uh, Today, it's Genesis 12, verses 10 through 20, and if you were with me yesterday, you'll recognize that yesterday was Genesis 12, verses 10 through 20, so I am repeating myself. Um, I'm repeating myself because I, I, I think... I, I missed an opportunity, something that, that, that sort of just ticked away at me all day um, and makes me want to go back to the passage. So I've done a little bit of thinking about it, which is not normal for me. Normally, I just read and think uh, aloud. Uh, so I've done a little bit of thinking about it, but not too much, just enough that I know I want to go back to the passage and wonder about it again. So um, yeah, so maybe you don't want to hear me wonder again. Good on you. I understand. But Maybe stick around because I think there's, I think there's something in the story that that uh, that I missed yesterday that I'd like to spend a little time on. So, well, let's see what happens. Um, so just before this part of the story, uh, as I reminded you yesterday, Abram has been called into a relationship with God. Right? God has called Abram and said, "Leave, leave Ur, leave the land of of of, of your ancestors, go to a place you've never been before." Um, and, and it feels to me like God is calling Abram into like a friendship. Uh, Abram does. Abram goes, uh, Abram goes with, along with his wife, Sarai and his nephew, Lot and all of their livestock, all of their people. They are a community now who have moved out of the one place out of Ur and they've moved into the, into, uh, the land of Canaan. Um, and that's where we are, right? So there they are moving across the wilderness and, This is what happens. Genesis 12, verses 10 through 20. Now there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to reside there as an alien, for the famine was severe in the land. And when he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know well that you are a woman beautiful in appearance. And when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that it may go well with me because of you and that my life may be spared on your account. When Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. When the officials of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And for her sake, he dealt well with Abram. He had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female slaves, female donkeys, camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh with his, in his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her for my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and be gone. And Pharaoh gave his men orders concerning him, and they sent him on the way with his wife and all he had. Pretty much what I read yesterday. And yesterday, as I wondered about this, I wondered about Abram sort of being the Odysseus figure, a wily, cunning um, character. Um, I mean, you know, when 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 famine comes, um, Abram, well, Abram doesn't ask God for help in the famine. Abram doesn't ask God to ha- to help him as he navigates through Egypt. Um, No, Abram is going to survive on his own wits and cunning. So it's all on him. He's taking care of it all. There doesn't even have to be God in the story, frankly, um, the way that it's set up for Abram, right? So so Abram's functioning on his own, and I contrasted that with the way that Abram will become Abraham and the difference. And I thought that might be the the point of the story. And and um, and I stand by that. I, I think that's 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 the author's intent, that is a big part of what we're invited to do, and it gave me things to wonder about. So that's great. Uh, why am I doing it again today? Well, well, because, I, I think because of Sarai, um, in, in, in this story, um, and, and this is a story uh, largely written by men, primarily written for men, um, and sort of all your active characters, the characters who do anything tend to be men. But every now and again, we're invited to think a little more. And, and, I, and I'm aware of, of some of the things that will happen with, with Sarai as, as we go on in Genesis, and, and you probably are too. But in this moment, in this moment, we start off, and, and Sarai is, is, is chattel. I mean, that's, 
that's just the way she is. She's a possession of Abram's um, um, to, to be given to Pharaoh um, um, and then returned, right? I mean, when, when, <laughs> I mean, when Pharaoh realizes what's happened, he gives her back. Um, and so Abram gets her back and gets to keep her along with the other gifts from Pharaoh, which were sheep, oxen, donkeys, slaves, camels, etc. Um, so, so she is, is, is chattel and we can talk, uh, about, about that society. And there's a lot we can say about attitudes towards women. And we can talk about how different that is today or how different that isn't today as we commodify women, as we, uh, sell bodies, um, so that those with power and wealth can have more power and wealth. We, and that is worth wondering about. It's not where I'm sort of going today, but it, it is always worth wondering about. Um, but what I wonder about here is, is what's going on for Sarai? What's going on in, in, in her mind? Because when Abram explains to Sarai what he plans to do, right? I mean, he says to her, according to the text, I know well that you that you are a, wo a woman beautiful in appearance. And when the Egyptians see you, they'll say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you're my sister, so that it may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared on your account. For me, he's asking her. Say that it's not so much an order as, as, as so, so do this for me, will you? In fact, do this for us, because it's not just Abram, right? There, there, there's all those people who are part of this um, of this uh, this caravan as it were um, and I don't know whether we're talking dozens hundreds or a thousand people right but we're talking a lot of people a lot of livestock um, you know and herdsmen and lot and lots of all of those all those people um, so so he's saying to her do this so that we can be okay so for me I think it could be consent. It might not be consent, but I, 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 I think it might be a consent. But even if it's not consent, it is an invitation, I think, for us to wonder about her and her feelings. I would guess that when this story was, was, was heard by women, they heard it differently than the men hear it. Um, that they imagined what was going on for Sarai, what was going on in her heart, what her feelings were. Um, her sacrifice on behalf of Abram and, and on behalf of all the others, right? Um, I mean, if you think about it, Abram has put them all at risk because Abram has, has basically set up a lie. So he, he said, okay, so we're going to get there. Lie to Pharaoh. Lie to Pharaoh that they won't kill me, okay, uh, that my life might be spared, but also that it may go well, which is to say, you know, so that, Pharaoh can give us gifts. So, so he's out to defraud Pharaoh, essentially. He is uh, lying. Um, so if he's caught in a lie by Pharaoh, how do you think Pharaoh and Pharaoh's soldiers will treat this whole community that are traveling with Abram? I can't imagine that they would be well-treated. Um, I don't know if they'd be killed. I don't know if they're livestock could be taken from them. I don't know if they would be banished, but I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't be welcome and said, oh gosh, you guys almost fooled me. No, it's going to go very badly. So Sarah carries that, Sarai carries that in her heart as well. She carries the weight of this whole community on her shoulders, which invites me to think a little bit about, about the women in, in my life um, and going back generations and and how much of the family life, of the community life, have they carried on their shoulders while men spoke big words, but the actual work, the actual sweat labor has been done, the actual emotional labor has been done by others. I'm not disparaging men here, um, but I'm acknowledging that, that there are other characters in our stories. And there's one here in, in Sarah, and, and, and it's it's just so beautifully put there that I can't not wonder about it. Now, it took me an extra day to think about to, to to wonder about it, but as you go over the story again and again as part of your uh, as part of your faith, 
surely the second, the third, the tenth time you hear the story, you go, well, wait a minute. What was it like for her? Her sacrifice on behalf of Abram, who I assume that she loves, her sacrifice on 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 behalf of of all of those people that Abram has put at risk. Abram put them at risk, not 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 Sarai, but Sarai's Sarai is the one who has to sleep with Pharaoh, um, and uh, yeah, uh, fantasies, romance novels aside, I'm not so sure that she was particularly happy to be to be uh, wedded to, to Pharaoh, to become one of his wives. I don't think that's that necessary a thing that she was looking forward to. Um, because in fact, if that's what she really wanted, then she could have blown the whistle on the whole thing, right? She could have said, by the way, I was married to him, but now I'm married to you. And Pharaoh could have kept her and gotten rid of everybody. So I mean, if that was her real goal, if she really liked being with Pharaoh, um, she had the means to make that happen, but she doesn't make that happen. Uh, because I believe she loves Abram, and I believe that she loves their their caravan, their community, their 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 group who are who are uh, following an invitation by God. So I wonder what emotional toil that was for her, how hard that was. Um, I suppose I could see that she has faith in Abram, like Abram's come up with this plan, so she's going to support it. But I still don't see how this plan could work. Um, right? I, I mean, it, it seems doomed to failure. Uh, or or she stays with Pharaoh, and they go on. So, so if this plan works, she ends up without her husband and without the remnants of her community, right? The, the people who were willing to, 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 to leave uh, her with, with her. So, so she becomes completely isolated, completely alone, truly a stranger in a strange land uh, by herself as, as, I mean, if the plan works, Abram and the others go off with, with their extra riches and, uh, and, and have avoided famine. Um, so the best way this works leaves her alone. The worst way this works leaves her with Pharaoh. There is no good way for her. No matter what happens, she loses everybody who, 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 she loses her family, right? No matter how this works out, good or bad, she ends up staying with Pharaoh. That's sort of how I would read that. So if her faith, in fact, is in Abram. But what if her faith is actually in God? Yeah, I know that that, that that God spoke to Abram and invited Abram to come out, and so Abram and his wife and and and, and the others follow. But but what if this is a testimony to to her faith that somehow this is going to work out? Even though it doesn't make any sense, even though you can't reasonably assume it's going to work out, somehow though she is trusting in God to make this mess resolve in a way that she is with family, in a way that her sacrifice is not uh, a wasted sacrifice. Otherwise, it it just makes no sense for me. Sarah should run from the scene, should blow the whistle on them, uh, should run from the scene, should do something, uh, but she doesn't. She, 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 follows, she follows Abram's plan, not because it'll work, but because she has faith that God is going to make this work. That's kind of where my wondering goes at this point. Um, I wonder about Sarah's faith, Sarai's faith, which then also invites me to wonder about my own faith and whether I am relying on my plans um, or your plans, um, my abilities, your abilities, or whether I am counting on God to make sense of this mess. See, if my faith is such that I I have faith that God will help me make sense of this mess, I am more willing to go into the mess. Um, if I don't have that kind of faith, then mostly I'm going to want to hide under my covers until it all gets better. Mostly I want to sink into despair because good or bad, I'm going to lose. Um, but if I have faith like Sarah, that I begin to believe that I'm not in this mess by myself, 
that God is here with me and that God is going to make sense of it somehow in ways that I can't yet see. I'm a 59-year-old, fairly well-educated white man. Um, I am used to things making sense to me. In fact, if someone comes up with an idea and a plan, I want them to explain it to me in such a way that I understand it, such a way that it makes sense to me. That's the way that I tend to live my life. It's also the way that I lean into my faith. I want to make sense of it. That's what I'm doing here. I wonder. And as I wonder, I try to make sense of these words. So if I, if they make sense to me, then I can agree. Okay, I get it now. And so now it makes it easier for me to trust God. But what if it doesn't make sense at all? Can I trust God then? Sarah, Sarah I did. It could not possibly have made sense to her. And yet she trusted and she, well, and it worked out for her. I tell you, that's a hard leap for me to make, I realize. I, I, I've i spent a lot of my life trying to have a faith like Abram. He's the father of the faith after all, once he becomes Abraham. But I have to wonder whether maybe I really want to learn to have a faith like Sarai, who will later become Sarah. I wonder um, if, 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 if she isn't the one who is inviting me into, in, into a, a truly bold faith. Anyway, I'm going to leave it right there. I think I probably said enough. Um, and yeah, let me offer a prayer. So loving God, loving God. Thank you for the stories that we don't hear first time through. Thank you for the faith, the beauty, the story, the truth that lies beneath. God, help us to, to regard others to recognize their deep abiding faith. God, help me, at least, recognize that I am not the, I'm not the hero of every story. Every story is not about me. Let me recognize the deep abiding faith, the deep wisdom, the power of the stories all around me. And let me discover more about you as I look at my siblings, as I regard their lives, as I open myself up to their lives, let me discover you. We pray in Jesus' name, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that is more than enough for me today. Uh, for my American friends, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, to my wife, happy anniversary. Uh, and to the rest of you, have a fabulous day. I hope to uh, chat with you tomorrow. But until then, God bless you. Please know God absolutely sees you. God loves you. And God's love moves through you always. You matter. We'll see you tomorrow.